Okay. So, uh, when we talk about charts related to social work, we're talking about trespass, that's number one. We're talking about nuisance, that's number two. And we're also talking about number three, negligence. Negligence. So, we start with the first one, that is trespass. And trespass is a wrongful injury or interference with the property of another person. Wrongful injury or interference with property of another person. Property refers to everything that a person owns, including moving and unmovable goods. These types of trespass, there are three types of trespass. Namely one, trespass of land. We have trespass of land. Trespass of land, that is one. The other one we have trespass of past trespass to person. <coughs> and that one we have trespass of goods. Those are the three types of trespass that are there and which when committed you have been offended. So trespass to land What does trespass to land mean? Trespass to land is committed when the plaintiff possession of land is wrongfully interfered with. It is the fact of possession rather than ownership that is important. As such, the plaintiff may be anyone in possession of land, whether he is the owner or tenant. <coughs> Wrongful interference with possession in relation to plaintiff's land may take the form of wrongful entering upon it or wrongful remaining in it, wrongful placing of placing or projecting of material object on it. So when you talk about land, you can hope you can be the owner. You can be the owner. Or you can be the possessor. Senor. So you're possessing that seat you are with, so you are in possession of the seat. Does that mean it's yours? No, it could be somebody else. The seat belongs to the school, the school. But currently you are the one in possession of the seat, of the seat. So if somebody interferes with it, if somebody interferes with it, Sendeo, he is interfering with you. Sendeo. So the same applies now to land. Uh, where you live, wherever you live, you live in Uitebia, Kiganjo, Magongani, wherever you live, that house you live in, is it yours? It's not yours, Sendio. But you pay rent for it, Sendio. So you, you are the one who possesses that, you, you possess it, the house, Sendio. You are the one in possession of the house. Of the house. If somebody comes into that house, if you search to leave the house, or maybe does something to the house, he can shit in the house, he, maybe he wants to stay in the house. That person is trespassing. That person is interfering with your right to enjoy that house. That person is trespassing. Trespassing. Hello, Anna? That person is trespassing. Trespassing. Ah, yeah. Again, if you own a certain land, you can own land. Send your you own a certain piece of land and then somebody comes to that piece of land and decides to build in that land it's not his land in the first place you have not sold the land to him neither have you given the permission of him to do whatever he is doing on the land on the land that is a stop trespass he is interfering with your land to 
Do you have any question on trespass of land? Ah, yeah. We look at another one. Trespass to this is person. Trespass to person. And when we talk about trespass to person. Like, like trespass to land, trespass to person is in threefold. It will consist of assault. Talk about trespass to person. May consist of one assault, two battery, two battery, and three force imprisonment. Increase on that. This is trespass to person. Uh, on assault, assault is committed by a person when he threatens to use force against the person of another, thus putting the person in fear of immediate danger, e.g. shaking a fist or pointing a gun, menacing at a person of another. It is important that the person threatened must be put in fear of immediate danger, otherwise there will be no assault. Assault is a tort as well as crime. So, when I'm assaulting you, doesn't mean necessarily I have to slap you. I can threaten to slap, to slap you. And even start shaking my hand, the way I'm going to slap you. That itself, by itself, is, ass is, an, is an assault. I can point you with a weapon, be it a gun, be it a panga, be it a rungu, and threaten to hit you or to harm you with it. That is a an assault. But it is important to note that for it to qualify to be an assault, for it to qualify to be an assault, there must be that element of fear. Sasa, there must be element of fear, of fear in you. Okay? You know, okay, we may be two jokers playing around with a pan with a panga. Sindio, you know I'm not serious, I know I'm not serious, so that is not an, an assault. And as such, there must be that element of danger and fear and fear. Somebody who is really threatening you and is likely to come to do the act, the act that will lead to harm. <laughs> battery. I see the battery already. Near the battery, near the monitor. See, you know this one. The battery in someone. Well, as such is. Constituted by the mere use of dread, calculated include in to induce fear. Battery is defined as the tactual application of force against another person without lawful justification. E.g., punching. Uh, E.g., punching, a nose, smacking his buttons, or slapping him, or clicking, etc. So when you talk about battery, now this is the extended assault. Sindio, somebody is not just threatening you. Somebody is actually hitting you. Somebody has actually slapped you. Somebody has actually kicked you. That is what you're calling battery. See, we have seen this in the village. Eh? I mean, it does not happen where you come from. Domestic violence. It, it, it can be either way. Mama na zakuwa na kimbizo, baba na zakuwa na kimbi. Depends with where you come from. That is what you're calling battery. The other one is false imprisonment. False imprisonment. 
This is said to be false imprisonment where a person is totally deprived of his freedom without justification. Whether physically or otherwise. E.g. locking up a person in a room whose only exit is locked door or surrounding him such that it is typically impossible for him to live where he is. Or telling him that if he lives where he is standing, he will be shot using a gun, which he knows to be physically present at the time. <coughs> it is interesting to note that it's a false imprisonment may be committed even without the plaintiff's knowledge, e.g., by locking him upon the bedroom while he is asleep and then reopening the door before he is awakened. On being informed of this fact, the plaintiff may sue the person who did the lock the room and reopen it in his bedroom. The length of time during which false imprisonment lasts is immaterial, but is relevant for the fact in gauging the extent of defendant's liability in damages. So when you block someone's path, somebody is moving around, going his, his way about his business, and then you decide this guy will not move anymore. He is going to stand where? Still. You are blocking his path. You don't want him to move forward, no backward, no sideways. You just want him to stay put. You go to an extent of touching the person. You tell him, if you move, I'm going to shoot. To shoot you. Or if you move, I'm going to cut you with a machete. Or I'll shoot you with an arrow. With an arrow. You have imprisoned that person. You have imprisoned that person. Again, you can lock someone in a room. Somebody gets into a bedroom, you're like, you're not getting out of there, you lock the, the room. Bearing in mind that the exit to that room is what? Is one, the one you have locked. Even if you come later and reopen the room, and the person inside still thinks he is locked in, it is still possibly imprisonment. Doesn't matter whether you locked the person for two, three minutes, one minute. The fact that you locked him inside the room is for Zimbri. Okay. That's that type of trespass. No, it's the second one. The fourth one is trespass of goods. Trespass of goods. This one, this one you know it very well. You actually do it every time. Sindio? So you do this one all the time? Mtu wa meanika to dress toke vizuri, they are in the hanging line. Umeoga. Naangalia hivi, unamua na valia hile. Unakanua, you dress. Sindio? Mtu wa meosha jacket yake vizuri, ya mehangu. Umetoka na huko kalia lezo ato mefika inji yo lezo Na za chelewa kurudi Una anhangi yi kuku hangi yi ngulaini unapali Unapali yi That is trespass of That's somebody else's item that you have collected Sindio So that is a trespass When you take also somebody's item You can even borrow it But You're supposed to return it Sindio and then you must stay with that item. Trespass of goods. Trespass of good is committed by a person who directly or intentionally interferes with goods in possession of another without lawful jurisdiction or justification. Uh, the plaintiff may be a person either in possession of the goods, the plaintiff may be possession in possession of the goods, Using the goods or wearing the goods, e.g. shards, destroying, damaging, and so forth. And B. A finder of a lost property is not liable for trespass, where the owner of the property is not known to him and cannot be easily ascertained. So when you collect somebody's item, like somebody has placed his book on the desk, I may say how up, then you collect it. You know very well these books belongs to Fulani Fula. Flani, flani. But you take the book with you and you go, keep it to yourself. You start using it, maybe for revision, for schoolwork, and so forth. That is true. That is just us. I am. Mm -hmm. But if you want to collect a book that does not have a name, 
does not have a number, does not have an email address, a book that is not known who it belongs to. Or it's not even easily to ascertain who the book belongs to. Sasawa, that is not trespass. That is not trespass. Provided you can prove that this book, even if I ask around, nobody is going to tell me who the, the owner of the book is. Or you have even tried it. There is no name, there is no any form of identification on the book to, to trace back to the owner. That is not trespass. That is trespass of goods. We have another. In trespass of goods, we have three types of trespass. We have uh, trespass of good trespass to goods. And trespass to goods. We have a, the other one is conversion. Conversion. And the other one is detaining. Detaining. And so when we talk about conversion, or talk about conversion, we are talking about where. Uh, like in trespass of two goods is based on possession and is actionable. Only defendant's act was intentionally but not where the defendant was merely negligent. Conversion is considered by dealing with goods in a manner that is inconsistent with the rights of a person in possession the, of the goods all entered to their immediate possession. Where intentionally sell be blah blah to see and so on and so forth. So like uh, you collect someone's item even if they are for sale. You collect someone's item. Even if they are for sale, they are for sale. That's a person who has not given him permission to sell, to sell the item. You, you, with you, Nakiarea, call Kibelebele, you just sell the item and you bring money in return. So you have done what? You have done conversion. Conversion. That is trespass. Unless you have expressed permission from the owner. <coughs> from the owner. Uh, the other one is detinue. Detinue. This one you do it all the time. Senior, how many of you are going to Jersey Zanye? Arsenal, Manchester. How many of you? How many of you are going to teach us Zanye? Hair bands, Viatu, Simu. How many of you? You're like, Nisa, this Simu, it's a music and baby. Two weeks, three weeks. Four months. How How many of you? Okay, basically all of you have somebody, something that belongs to someone that you borrowed, isn't it? No. saying no. And you have refused to return it. Detaining is continued, is, is committed when goods are long through withheld or detained from a person entitled to their to their to their immediate possession, including withholding by Bailey from the bailer. Thus, oh yeah, A borrows a hole from B, and something fails to or refuses to return it to B. Where it returns to B, may sue A for detinue. Will be liable even where the A, the whole A is proved that he had been stolen from me at the time where he returns it to you. So this is where you borrow an item, and then you keep it. You keep it, you keep it, you keep it, two months, three months, three, four months. Then the fifth month you are determining it to me. I have a right to sue you. Why? Why, 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 you, why, why did you ever stay with my item? You would compensate me. Mm -hmm. Even if you tell me that you had lost the item, I don't care. You should compensate. Compensate me. That is what you are calling it. It happens all the time. But people don't take it to be a big deal. People just assume. assume. And at times, people, the items you have borrowed, you realize that the person you have borrowed from is not even in use of that item. Or that an interest in your item. So what are you, but it does not cremate back. Cremate back. And then you keep it to yourself permanently. Send you? Yeah, some of you have a t-shirt and you have cut a mikono kwanza as if it's yours. Then you have a t-shirt. You You borrow a book and you have a t-shirt pages. You write your name there on top. 
you borrow a phone to use for two, three days, you start downloading applications in it. Facebook, WhatsApp. You change even the, the email, the account. Detainable.